Hi, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lee from Twi. On this channel, I make some tutorials. I post new videos on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. So make sure to check back on those days in order to watch new content. In this video, I will show you how to make the um, three-step play dress that you've seen on the thumbnail and on the B-roll um, footage before now. If you like the video, please, please make sure to give it a like as that helps the channel and gets the video recommended to a lot of other people who might be interested in stuff like this. If you are a beginner or if you are a person who wants to up on your skill, I have online courses i'll be showing a demo on how to make a jumpsuit for you to watch and decide if learning online will be convenient for you if you can just send the telegram message number that you can see on the screen thank you so much for your time thank you so much for watching have a lovely day bye bye all right so welcome to today's video in this video i will show you how to make the dress that you've seen on the thumbnail so now to begin I have made um, a video on this channel before, uh, a tube on this channel before. The name of the video is how to draft a tube um, gathers dress. So see that video. And also I would advise that you see my video on uh, how to draft an off shoulder bustier as it is very, very similar to this. And um, if you can see what I have here, here I have a bodice that I have already drafted. So if you don't know how to draft the bodice, watch my video, how to draft an off shoulder bustier where I show from the very beginning. But because I have done it before, there's no need for me to do it again. So I just skip to what is important. Now, what you can see here is the bodice I have drafted already. I have placed the shoulder. I have placed my armhole. Over here, I have placed my boss. My boss is 36. I divided 36 by four. So here, this is nine. My under boss round is 30. I place it at my half cut at 7.5. Please see the video on how to draft, a, um, on how to draft an off shoulder bust here and how to pad an off shoulder bust here as they would explain everything I have done before now in detail. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm go I'll, I'll have to cut out a tube out of the bodies that you have here, sorry. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down by seven. So when you are making a tube, just know that once you get past six inches, you have started exposing, you know, some bust at the top. Okay, so I'm going to come down to seven, trying to be a bit bold here. I'm going to come down to seven and I'm going to first of all draw a line from here to here. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the bust point to bust point. That's the, the um, distance from the nipple to the nipple. For the person I'm making this for, the um, bust span is 7 inches. So you're going to divide 7 inches by 2 because here, the way I drafted the bodice is assumed that you folded your bodice into 2. Alright? You're going to divide your bust point to bust point by 2. So the bust point to bust point divided by 2 is 3.5. The bust point to bust point is 7. 7 divided by 2. 3.5 plus half an inch for sewing allowance that gives us four inches so i'm going to come from the edge of the paper and i'm going to come to four inches and make a mark at the top make a mark at the bottom and connect them together okay so i'm going to connect them like so and then next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come up from the underboss curve by half an inch and i'm going to draw a line from the top to the bottom all right now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and place the underbust curve. So the underbust curve um, for this person is two inches. See my video on how to draft an off shoulder bust here if you don't know what that is. So I'm going to place that at this green line and at the end of the bodies. Mind you, this two, the, the double line I, I um, have here, this top line is where the body stop. This half inch here is allowance I'm going to use for when I'm sewing. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line from here to here. And I'm going to make a curve from here to the bust. Alright, so you see that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top. And I'm going to mark half inch on both sides. So you see this green line I have here. I'm going to mark half inch out and half inch in. So you see this. I'm going to mark, make a mark at half inch here. Make a mark at half inch here. So half inch on both sides of the first bo um, line that we drew. Alright, so now the next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to come to the bottom part also. So you see this part that I have here, this line I have here, I'm going to come in by half an inch and I'm going to make a mark. Draw from here to the bust point. All right, now the next thing is for me to start paying back all the allowances. But I'm only going to pay back this allowance under here. I won't pay back this because I intend to make a curve from here to the armhole. So any allowance I pay back because what I did here will end up being useless. So what I'm going to do is this. You see this place here? I'm going to pay back only 2 inches over here, not 2.5. I'm going to um, ignore this part I opened up here. I'm going to mark 2 inches here. And I'm going to try to draw a line as straight as possible to the top. Now, if you have a person who, who uh, let's say, has a bust of 38 and has an under bust run of 37, 30, of 27, 28, this, this line I just drew now will still be a curve. No matter what you do, just make sure that your line does not curve back in, okay? If it's still slanted, it's fine. It means the person is very curvy. But if you have a person that's not so curvy and the line is slanted, know that there's, a, that there's an issue. After you've done this, you can now add a regular sewing allowance. For me, I'm going to add 2 inches of regular sewing allowance. I'm adding 2 here, adding 2 at the top. And then I'm going to connect them together. So I'm going to draw a line from here to here. And then I'm going to complete this line over here. And then I'm going to make a curve from here to my armhole. See the bottom of the armhole that I have here. That's why we had to draft the bodies complete. All right, so I'm going to make a curve from here over to the top. OK? You can see here, this is the um, front, two sides of the front. All right, so what you can see here is um, the bodice that is similar to the first one that I drafted, okay? The only difference is that in front of it, we have two inches that I kept for um, zipper allowance. That's this part right here. So now we don't need the bodice at the back to be as high as the bodice at the front because there's no bust. So at the back here, I'm going to keep it flat. Okay, so here, I'm going to keep here flat all the way through. And then what I'm going to do next is over here, I'm going to come up by one inch, make a mark. Okay, so you see here, one inch, make a mark here. And then I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Okay, so you see that? With this, I have um, taken away any chance of there being uh, some excess at the back. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the, the bust line. So you see this, the dash line, sorry. I'm still placing four inches the same way I did in front. I'm going to draw a line from here. Then I'm going to open up by half inch on both sides. Now I'm just showing you how the dash will behave. We'll not actually cut the paper open because that won't be necessary. And then now I'm going to add regular allowance. So because of this dash, I'm going to place here. This half half is going to turn into one inch. So over here, I'm going to place three inches of sewing allowance. And then up here, I'm going to place two inches of sewing allowance. The next thing is to transfer all these patterns that I have onto the fabric. So for all the sides, both the two sides of the front and the one side that makes up the back, you would have to put, put the paper on a fold before you cut, okay? So you fold the, uh, paper, the fabric before you cut, sorry. The only thing that I would tell you to be careful about is when you are cutting the center of the front. So you see here, you are going to make a fold like this when you are cutting the center of the front. Just make sure that you keep the center, this part here, the front of the center of the front, you keep, make sure you keep it like this, okay? Make sure that the edge that you keep it on is sealed. But for every other part, both this side here and the back, you can keep it however, and the patterns will come out just fine. So let me cut the patterns, and I'll also cut the lining that's meant for them. I'm using cotton lining. The lining is going to be exactly the same pattern with the fabric. There's not going to be any difference on it. And um, when I'm done with that, we'll now start the whole the sewing process. Okay. So here you can see that I have cut out my patterns. So this is the center, this is the side. And like I said, as for the center piece, there's only one piece, but I put it on the fold and I made sure that the center here stayed sealed so that you can see that it is mirrored on both sides, all right? Yeah, and I've cut the lining, the lining that's meant for it. Also, on the side here, you can see that the side I have 
um, on all the sides, as a matter of fact, I have ironed um, interfacing and I've done some things to them. So see my video on how to pad, um, how to pad an off-shoulder bustier in order to know what I have done here. Okay, so I've cut out the patterns. This uh, two sides of the back with respective lining. So let's start joining everything together. So for the fabric first, I'm going to join these two parts together. So I'm going to join here and here to here by flipping it like so and joining here from the bottom all the way to the, all the way around to the top. So let me join the two sides to the center on both the fabric and the lining and I will be back. All right, so what you can see here is the front, okay? I have built the front completely. You can tell from, from the way the bust is now protruding. I have stitched them together and that has created the bust. This is what the inside looks like. It has been flattened and I have ironed it with interfacing. All right, so you see this. And then on the lining, I joined the lining the same way too, okay? You can see that I have joined the lining together. Now the next thing, that's the two sides of the lining to the center of the lining, sorry. Next thing we're going to do, you are going to dart the back. Okay, so you can see this point. This point that I notched here is where I held the dart. I'm going to simply collapse it like so. And then I'm going to start holding my dart from half inch and I'll taper out to nothing as I run towards the top. I'm going to do that on both sides of the lining and the fabric. Okay, and with that from half inch, taper out to nothing. When I've done that, I'll be back, all right? All right, so what you can see here are uh, all sides of the back. These are the two sides of the lining and the two sides of the fabric for the back. Now you can see, if I hope that the thread is picking this up. If we look closely, so bright. If you look closely, you will see that up here, I started from half, okay, and I tapered out to nothing. So that's what you want to do on all sides of the um, back when you're holding your darts. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll iron them flat and the next thing is to join this to the front. All right, so now you can see that I have ironed the darts that I held flat. Next thing we're going to do is we have to join the sides together. So you see this part here, I'm going to join here to here and on this other side, I'm going to join here to here. Okay, now remember I kept two inches for my sewing allowance, so I'm going to simply just fold it like this. You see this? Keep front side facing front, and I'm going to run two inches from top all the way down on the left, and I'm going to do the same thing on the right, two all the way down. Now the same thing applies to um, the lining. Okay, so what you can see here is the front. I have joined the side to it. Look, I've joined the back to the front on both sides and I have ironed it flat. If I turn it around, and I've done the same thing to the lining as well. Okay, so you can see this. You can see that here is flat. Here is flat, well ironed. Now the next thing that I'm going to look at is flat because I have joined it under here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to measure across the top part uh, so that we know how, um, the, 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 the length of the flay that we need to cut. So you've seen the dress, the dress has three flays. One at the top, one after the joining, and one that is the hem of the dress. So now for the very first um, piece, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, now this is the piece that will be joined to the top. We're going to measure through. Okay, so at the top, okay, the circumference of the top, the length of the top part of, the, of what we're working on is 39. So we're going to need to cut to divide 39. For the flay, we're going to cut it as a 720 degree flay. If you don't know how to cut flays, I would advise that you also check out my video on how to draft 360, 720, 1440 degrees flay. There's a video on that on my channel that will you know, give you the details. I would also explain a bit of it here, but still see that video for additional knowledge. So 39 is the length of the top. Now for the length of the flay itself, yeah, for that you are going to need the center piece, okay? So whatever this length is, is what we're going to use to cut the flay. So you're going to, now this is the side piece that we have here, okay, the side bustier piece as you can see. We're going to measure from here to the top. So this here is 8.5, that's going to be the length of the flay. You will see how I'll apply it now. Now, if, you see, if you've seen the video on how I cut my flays, since this is a 720 degree flay, it means we're going to divide that 39, okay, we're going to divide that 39 um, by 8, we're going to divide 39 by 8 and use that to cut the top of the circle. Okay, so now it's time to start cutting the flay. 
I'm going to use this paper as an example, then I will um, show you how to fold to cut. But this is the general idea on how to cut a flake um, my way. If you are cutting a 360 degree flake, which is a regular flake, you will divide the circumference of the, of the number that you have. In this case, it's 39. You divide the circumference of the, of the um, number by um, 4, okay, and use that to draw the circle that I'm about to draw now. If you are making a 720 degree flake, like we are making, you are going to divide that number by 8. So 39 divided by 8 is um, 4 point, by, by 8 is 4 point, um, 4 point 8. So now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tape and I'm going to fold 4.8 around the top and then make a mark around the circle. So I'm going to use 4.8, check this out. Okay, I'm going to use 4.8 to make a circle and then I will dot mark around. Okay, make sure it's 4.8 and then simply connect your line around the semicircle. Now, if you are cutting a 720 degree flay, you are going to need to cut two flays to join them together in order to make it one. Okay, it should be fuller than the 360 degree flay. That's why we bother with the 720. Now, remember that 8 that I told you when we measured 8.5, when we measured from here down, when we measured this um, side piece here. That 8.5 is what you now place here, but now I'm going to place 9 around the body. Okay, so now the next step is to get the fabric and make the fold. I'm going to cut two pieces in order to make one flay. So first you fold so that you can get the length like I have done. And then now you're going to make a fold. So you see what I did. First I folded like this and now I'm folding like this. Now this is for the top flay. So I'm going to do what I have just done now a second time so that it to complete the flay. After you have cut both flays, you can now divide. You now divide one side. Now see this, I'm only dividing one. Okay. So this is the first flay. And then I'm going to divide again. I'm going to join these two sides together and this will create the first step um, for the flay. After I join here together, I'm going to finish the bottom of the flay with um, cotton bias. Alright, so now it's time to piece it together. Well, look at what I have here. This is the cotton bias I've used to finish the bottom part of here. Okay, so now to join them, to join all of this together. We're going to bring the bodies and lay it like so. You are going to place the wrong side of the flay that you have made to the correct side of the fabric. Okay, so we're going to start joining from here. Okay, so after you have joined the top part of the shoulder, after you've joined the top part of the flay to the top part of the bodice, which is what we have done now. Okay, look at this. We have the bodice, the bustier underneath and this on top. The next step is to simply add your lining. That's the next step. So I'm going to stitch the lining from here all the way down to the end. All right, so when you are done, be sure to notch the angles that you have on both sides. And then turn everything inside out. Okay, after you turn everything inside out, you are going to now align the fabric and the lining without the flay in the mix. You're going to align the fabric and the lining together. And then I'm going to stitch this from here all the way down. Okay. 
Now I have joined the fabric and the lining together at the bottom. I will now take this to my ironing table and give this a very, very good press so that all of this lays flat. And then I'm going to cut 720 degree flays for the bottom part of the dress. So for the bottom that you see here, I'm going to cut two levels. I'm going to cut the long one and the short one. So the total dress length I want is 37. Okay, so now for the long flay, that's the one that is the hem of the dress, the longest flay, I'm going to cut that at 37 minus 16, which is um, this length. You know, from the top part to this half cut, this is 14, this is 16, if you remember when we were drafting it. So I'm going to subtract 16 from 37, and that will give me the length of the longest one. And then I'm going to make the, um, the um, other step to be half of that, okay? So 37 minus 16, that is, thing is 21. So the longest flay will be 21. And then I'm going to cut 21 inches long. So I'm going to cut the, um, the shorter part, the shorter flay at 11 inches. So there will be two levels, 11 inches and 21 inches. I'll cut all those levels and I'll be back to show you what we do. After you have joined the flay together. So you see, this is the first step of the flay for the bottom. I remember I, I had showed you I had I had shown you how to um, make it. So what I did was I measured I measured the bottom part from here all the way to the end over here, and I divided that number by um, eight. Just exactly what I did to the first one, and I cut two sides. So you can see this is this is the shorter one that's 11 inches. This is the line that I used to bind them together. Now the next thing is to use our cotton bias to finish it off properly. So to do that, this is my cotton bias over here. What you're going to do is this. You're going to open up, so the bias has been pre-folded. You're going to open up the bias like so. You're going to stitch from here. Let me just show you what to do. Okay, so I'm not at the end of the flay yet, but when you are doing yours, go all the way down to the end of the flay. And when you are done with that, you are now going to fold the bias. Okay, so you see the bias. You will now fold the bias over the fabric and then you would make a stitch a stitch on top of it okay like so and this stitch will cover the rough edge of the bottom part of your dress inside okay so you see this here will be covered here would be clean all right so i'm going to do this around the flay and then we'll move over to the next step all right okay so after you have um you have you put applied your bias all the way around the next thing you do is just simply join the flay together so when you're about to join the flay together the first thing the flay to the body sorry the first part that should go on top should be the shorter side so the one that's 11 inches long is the first level that should come in contact with the um, bustier part of your dress so i'm going to join it together half an inch before adding the other one on top of this piece that i have over here All right, so now after doing this, the next step is to fix your zipper. So now, you see this place that we have here? This is where all the joining, all our exposed sewing is. So you're going to need to use an overlocker to finish here and any place where you join the two sides of the 720 degree flay together. Now, if after you have done that, that's for the neatest finish. But after you have done that, but if you notice the body, because of how we've been sewing it, it's clean all the way. So there's no need to use any overlocker here. When you are done with that, you are going to come to the joining. So you see here, this is the opposite side, okay, the clean side. You are going to align both sides of the joining together. And then you are going to skip six inches from the joining, okay? Then I'm going to come to six inches, and then I'm going to start joining it, joining them together from here all the way down. okay so now after you have look at where we joined the six inches from from here to here the last step is to fix your zipper so this is pretty elementary just to install a zipper i have a video on my channel on how to fix a zipper and i've done that in uh, various videos so check that out if you do not fix a zipper or simply fix a zipper and after that you are done 
with the dress after you fix the zipper from the top part here to this place where you started stitching um, six inches, half an inch from the edge. After I fix the zip, you are basically done. That's the end of the uh, dress. It's looking really, really good already. That's how I made the dress that you saw in the bureau sequence before um, we started even drafting, all right? So uh, let me fix the zipper. Have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.